won't, won't require you to look closely at the slide. Okay, um, so uh, typically um, one, of, one of the most common ways of approaching a text is to use a dictionary. Um, not a dictionary that describes every word in the language, but that classifies words into specific categories of interest to a researcher. Um, I've, kind of, I've kind of separated these into three general classes here. One would be a corpus-specific dictionary. So if you know that you're out to look at a, a, a corpus and you want to find themes about exercise, you create a dictionary about terms associated with exercise. Um, as uh, Gary mentioned last night, that in intuition may, may cause problems. Um, and um, we, we, could, we, could, uh, we could check out that uh, paper. Do you know who's the author on that paper, Brandon? A from McDonald Financial. Pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we can we can talk about that later, but that's a common process um, in automated text analysis. Another strategy is to use someone else's dictionary. Um, there's an inherent problem with that, which is that most of the time someone else's dictionary was made for their research question. Um, but there are several, uh, or actually probably dozens by now, that uh, or probably more than dozens that make an attempt to make general classifications of text. Uh, for example, Luke or linguistic inquiry word count tries to identify all the psychometric properties of text, things like the amount of negative emotional language or fear expressed in a given sentence. And the way, it do, the way that this technique was developed was to uh, take every word in the dictionary and associate it, and, and other types of text. Now the newest version has, I, I believe, social media, uh, emoticons, and so on and then have a team of researchers assign them to these categories, uh, then look at intercoder reliability to the extent to which these researchers assign the terms the same code, and then give each term a, 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 a propensity, or a, an association in quantitative form with a latent theme. And you can see on one of the next slides all the types of themes that um, that particular tool uses <coughs> with many others. And third, finally, sentiment analysis. There are uh, non-dictionary forms of sentiment analysis. But often sentiment analysis, which is detecting the valence of a text, whether or not it's positive or negative, often sometimes angry, um, happy, or, or something like that, um, typically relies upon some dictionary-based uh, approach. So a list of words, mad, sad, whatever, uh, that might capture negative terms. Um, there's a variety of problems with, with uh, sentiment analysis. I think um, it's uh, it's, it, many of the most popular methods were trained on, for example, Yelp data, and so if you're applying them to other other use cases, um, you may experience mixed results. I'll show you some slides at the very end of this section that show just how much variation we can get across different dictionaries. Um, here's a very simple way of creating your own dictionary um, that you could apply to, for example, uh, the Twitter data set that we collected yesterday. You're simply constructing a list of strings um, that you might call, in this case, negative words. Um, the Stringer library that Connor mentioned earlier, there's many, many ways to skin this cat in Python and R. Um, but here we can use the string detect function within Stringer to look for this list of words. Um, there's probably more elegant ways of doing this, but this is a for instance if you, for example, wanted to create your own dictionary to code some type of Twitter data or, or, or other um, text based data. Here are the, here's the aforementioned linguistic inquiry word count. Actually, you probably would have appreciated having these slides so you could read these. I'll just read a few. It's things like the total uh, personal pronouns, impersonal pronouns, present tense, future tense, uh, swear words, numbers, uh, uh, words about family, friends, positive emotion, anxiety, anger, sadness, insight, causation, discrepancy, tentative certainty, inhibition, and so on and so forth. Um, I, I, I've been making a, a, a I've been focusing on on Luke because it's one of the more widely used um, techniques. It was used it was used for example in the emotional contagion experiment at Facebook that we talked about on the first day. Um, I think it's been used so much because it's been around so long. Um, in uh, we'll look at some meta analysis in a little bit that show it does. You know it has mixed uh, results in, in some ground truth analysis where people are trying to look at how well it does. But the systematic rigor with which it produced, I think, has, has convinced a lot of people that it has utility. So here's that meta-analysis. Um, this is a, a, a data set that these folks um, labeled 
in terms of themes, um, some of the themes that cut across uh, a variety of different sentiment analysis tools. Um, here's Sentecnet, Happiness, Emoticons, Linguistic Inquiry Word Count in blue here, um, PenAST, Sasa, and SentiWordNet. And these are different types of corpuses, Twitter, MySpace, BBC, Dig, uh, I'm not sure what RW is, and YouTube. Um, and you can see here's the ground truth where the topics actually are. And we do see, you know, or sorry, the, the sentiment actually is sentiment about these topics. They reproduce this across different topics. Um, we see, you know, there's a general trend that vaguely follows the peaks. Um, and some follow it more closely. If we look at the distance here between some of these bands, um, we can see um, some, some techniques are doing better than others. And that's, again, because, by and large, dictionary uh, based methods are created by someone else for their purposes, and when they're repurposed, we need to be careful about um, uh, what they might do to our analysis. Questions about sentiment analysis? So here's a great example of an inherent limitation of a dictionary-based method. I hate to be the president. Right? This gets a strong negative score um, in, for example, linguistic inquiry word count. It's probably worth noting, though, that this text would also uh, hate and president would co-occur in a bad bag of words model. The useful thing about a bag of words model is we might have more context with which to train our classifier, and, and it, it might be um, because this is an unusual way to use the word hate. Um, um, we might not, um, especially within a large corpus um, with long documents, um, this might not interrupt our classification very much. But in the case of dictionary-based class classification of this particular sentence. It's just a brief example of how we could really uh, do harm with dictionary-based methods. So just to sum up, uh, before we take our break and, and hear from Brandon, um, the quality of dictionary-based methods depends upon the match between the learning corpus and the one you want to code. Creating your own is often a good solution, but it's very time-intensive. Footnote that, that, that paper that um, Gary mentioned on the potential problems with creating your own keywords. Um, and um, that's it. Dictionary methods is, is pretty straightforward stuff. Um, you can find many of them as R packages. Uh, the uh, linguistic inquiry word count um, is, uh, uh, they, they, I believe they do now have an API, but otherwise you have to purchase their standalone software, which I think is about 80 bucks. Um, any questions about dictionary analysis? Yeah, sure. Um, how common are disambiguation methods? Disambiguation methods? So like either finding out something's negative or disambiguating context. Let's put the question to the group. I mean, it's an. I think there's such disciplinary specific. Can you repeat the question? Uh, how common are disambiguation methods? I'd say negation is pretty common, as as are like simple like very simple patterns. So Luke does a lot of these. Um, the general inquirer, which is another sort of common one, does a lot of these. Uh -huh. but they're, they're very like they're very simple. Like o often, it's just to capture opposites. Okay. Yeah. Is there are there any kind of standard vetted tools for doing that, or are you kind of on your own with uh, making one up? QDAP does sentiment and polarity and takes into account. QDAP is a package in R, um, and you can do sentiment analysis, and it takes into account not uh, negative words and also um, amplifiers like very. But with custom dictionaries. You can add your own. I know you can add your own custom dictionary in QDAP. It's a it's a fantastic package. It does a lot of okay. nice. It has a nice a lot of nice utilities for basic text cleaning and stuff like that. And I think now it has sentiment analysis. I think it has part of speech tagging now. It's, there's a variety of competitors, but it's I a have nice a tut our tutorial on QDAP that I'll send post cool. to the group. Will you throw it on Slack? Yeah. Thanks. All right. Should we take a break? Let's come back promptly at uh, ten fifteen, please. Thanks.